So we wanted to thank everyone for your time this afternoon. We're delighted to share with you details about professional programs here at Lang, at the Gordon S. Lang School of Business and Economics. So in terms of our professional programs, what we'll be covering today, we are going to be talking about our Masters of Business Administration, our Masters of Arts in Leadership degree, and our new Master of Project Management program that was just launched this year. In terms of reminders, again, you're welcome to keep your microphone on mute and you're welcome to use the chat function throughout if you have any questions based on what you see and hear. And everyone that has joined this call as a registrant has received information about our programs, including application instructions and frequently asked questions, details about application deadlines and details about the application requirements, details about the cost of the programs, um, so hoping that everyone has that general uh, interest information. And I also believe attendees, those that have registered, have received a pre-assessment, giving them a sense as to their eligibility for admission for the respective program. So if you don't have that, you're always welcome to contact us at our general email account, lang.grad at uoguelph.ca. So speaking of which, we are again delighted to be associated with the Gordon S. Lang School of Business and Economics. Our alumni, staff, faculty are all uh, quite proud to be associated with this remarkable institution. And when I think about our mission, what we focus on at the School of Business at the University of Guelph, we're really focused on developing leaders to use business as a force for good. That's our mission. And it really is sort of in sort of honor of this mission. Uh, we believe that if we are educating and supporting and developing ethical and collaborative business leaders, that they will understandably, unquestionably, be those that are leading in the future in terms of the demand for ethical, collaborative, sustainable business leaders to lead organizations, multinationals alike. I don't know if folks are familiar with AACSB accreditation. We are quite proud at Lang to be AACSB accredited. Really, there's only about 6% of the business schools across the world that are AACSB accredited. And if folks aren't familiar, AACSB uh, is the longest as well as the most recognized accreditation for business schools. So they started in 1916 accrediting business school programs, and they really have remarkable accreditation standards that ensures a rigorous review of faculty competency and faculty strength, strength and rigor in terms of curriculum as well as all of the sort of adjunct services and supports for students as they come through the program. This kind of accreditation really ensures that Lang as a school of business, as well as our respective programs, have the resources, the credentials, the faculty, the supports to deliver and maintain really strong high caliber programs. So we're delighted to be able to share that. And for those that are looking, obviously, for an accredited uh, graduate degree, know that the MBA, the Masters of Leadership, and the new Masters of Project Management are all under that umbrella in terms of being AACSB accredited. So this is our namesake, Gordon S. Lang, visionary, entrepreneur, and business leader. Gordon S. Lang founded CCL Industries in Canada in 1951. You may not have heard of CCL Industries, but if you've ever printed an Avery label, for example, or in many ways uh, you go to a store like a Walmart, for example, or the Bay, and they have um, 
those sort of theft protection devices that are attached to clothing that if you were to leave with it attached would ring the alarms. CCL Industries is uh, a pioneer in packaging and printing. And we are so honored to be named after this remarkable, entrepreneurial, exceptional business leader. It's this quote of his as well that I think really resonates with our team, as well as our students and alumni at Lang. It's that we want to work hard, not be afraid to take risks and be the one that's leading change, not following. I spoke earlier about our mission, business as a force for good. These are our values that we really rely on that allow us to achieve that vision, really hold up our mission of business as a force for good. So um, the first thing I'm going to note, when you look at the Lang logo, you'll see four different colored squares, a black square, a red square, a gold square, and a blue square. That was quite deliberate in terms of really how we represent ourselves. And when I look at the logo, I think of these values represented again with those respective squares in the logo. So in terms of the black square, really focused on research with impact. So we have remarkable faculty researchers and students that are making huge advancements in terms of contributions to business management, leadership, project management, supply chain management. Community engagement is represented by the red square. We know that collaborative and meaningful partnerships are really our only way forward in terms of just an effective business strategy, again, to achieve business as a force for good. The gold relates to ethics and integrity. So we are all very focused on strong morals and ethics and integrity following through on what we say we are going to do. And finally, but certainly not least, is this blue square relating to educational innovation. So here at Lang, it's more than just a collection of courses as someone goes through their graduate program. It's more than just the assignments. It's more than just the readings or the research that you would do as a graduate student. In many ways, it's an opportunity to provide the kind of learning environment that is cutting edge, that is flexible, that allows people to, in the case of many of our courses and our programs, be able to learn and develop their competencies in a way that works for them. It's about creating a graduate student experience that transcends just the courses themselves. So here are all of the various programs that we have here at Lang. We do have a Bachelor of Commerce degree, an undergraduate degree, a four-year BCom, as we call it. We have the MBA program and the Masters of Project Management and the Masters of Arts in the area of leadership. Those three degrees are what we're going to speak about during our professional programs information session today. But we also wanted to let you know that we also have a Masters of Arts in the area of economics two different graduate diplomas, one in the area of accounting and the other in project management. We have research focused graduate degrees like our masters of science programs in the areas of marketing, tourism and hospitality and management. And then for those that want to continue further to a masters of science that's research intensive into a research intensive PhD program, we have a traditional doctorate focused in the area of economics and one in management. So for those that are joining us here today that are interested in the Masters of Arts in leadership, this is how the program runs. So uh, students start in the summer semester. We do that quite deliberately. So our students, when they arrive for the intensive experience on campus over five days, this Lang grad conference, uh, students, our students have run of the campus. You're not having to compete with any of the 25,000 undergrads. So our students start in May with that intensive period, an opportunity to get your feet wet and develop competence in terms of starting successfully uh, your graduate program. 
And then after that five-day intensive experience on campus, folks go home, uh, catch up on things that they missed uh, since they were away, and then folks begin their coursework. So in the Master's of Arts in Leadership program, our students take one graduate level course at a time. Each graduate level course is seven weeks online. So the online courses are delivered asynchronously. So it's what I was mentioning a little bit before that the delivery of the courses is flexible to support those that are busy working professionals that are juggling many other commitments. So the 20 hours a week of coursework each week in a seven week long course uh, uh, really allow for folks to decide when and how you're going to dedicate your time to your studies. So what this means before your course even begins, all of our students have an opportunity to access a very clear cut course outline that details week to week what you need to do. So the things you need to do are things like reading. So reading a textbook, reading some academic articles, and all of those will be detailed in the course outline. Other academic activities, you might need to do a case study or read a case study or start to engage in some research relating to the topic at hand. There might be other supportive resources that the instructor provides you like a video, uh, virtual office hours, um, opportunity to really connect with the content in terms of virtual discussions or any other sorts of pedagogical uh, learning opportunities. And students, as you're busy juggling many other commitments at home as a professional that you are, decide when you're going to chunk out the time to do the reading, the research, and the other academic activities. So if you're a morning person and you want to do your coursework in the mornings, that's up to you. If you're a night owl and you want to do your coursework in the evenings after you get home from work, you can do that as well. It really is up to you to decide how you chunk out the requirements for the courses week to week. So again, you'll dedicate 20 hours a week each week to your seven week online course. After the seven week online course is over, you will then move into the next course in sequence. So there are two courses offered every semester, one after the other, and you'll have two courses every semester for five semesters. So a total of 10 courses over the course of the Masters of Arts in Leadership program. So if you were to start your program in May 2024, you would be complete in terms of your coursework requirements for the program in December 2025. And really what I wanted to also illustrate is that at the tail end of your program, students also have an opportunity to be flexible about how they complete their degree. So students have an opportunity at the one year mark to decide after you've got all the foundational content from the degree, uh, how you want to complete the rest of your coursework. So you could complete two elective courses of your choice. There are a number of different elective courses available. Or if instead you want to go it alone and do an independent study project, you could undertake a major research project at the tail end of your program, denoted by that MRP on the slide. So that's how the Masters of Arts and Leadership runs. Again, two courses every semester, but students only are focused on one course at a time, seven weeks of coursework, and then that course is over before you move into the next one. The Masters of Business Administration is designed in much the same way. So again, for the MBA program, all of the courses are online. Our MBA students also start their studies with that intensive five-day on-campus Lang Grad Conference, again, an opportunity to get your feet wet and successfully launched into your graduate degree. And then the courses are structured the same way as I just described. So our MBA students, because they're busy working professionals and juggling full-time work and family commitments and other personal and professional responsibilities, our MBA students only take one course at a time. The course is delivered online over a period of seven weeks, and every week students in our MBA program commit 20 hours a week to their coursework. So the same structure 
You'll have a very clear cut course outline and you'll just know what you need to read, what you need to research, what kind of case study and other academic activities you need to engage in. You just follow that outline. After the seven weeks, your course is over and then you move into the next course. So for those that initiate their MBA program in May, 2024, you could expect to have your degree program completed in time for April, 2026. Again, with the MBA program at the one year mark, you have the opportunity to decide how you want to complete the remainder of your program, whether through taking two elective courses or through doing an independent study project called the major research paper denoted by that MRP. Finally, our new graduate diploma and master of project management programs. We are delighted to announce these new programs. They just started this last summer in 2023. For those that are interested in a graduate diploma in the area of project management, the graduate diploma is made up of four courses that you take over one semester. So four uh, courses, one semester, four months in, time, in, in terms of the amount of time. Of the four courses as part of the graduate diploma, two of the courses are offered online and delivered in exactly the same way described for the earlier programs. So the online courses are seven weeks in length, fully online, delivered asynchronously, and the students commit 20 hours a week to each of the online courses. The remaining two graduate diploma courses are in-person on-campus courses. So the delivery is half online courses and half in-person courses. And those in-person courses have a weekly three hour lecture. And so folks are on campus um, for those three hours a week for each of their in-person courses. Our graduate diploma students also have an opportunity to join and meet everyone and network and successfully launch into their diploma, uh, starting first with the Langrad Campus uh, Conference. For those that are joining us that are interested in the Masters of Project Management program, we're gonna describe the fastest way that you can complete the Masters in Project Management program. But as I mentioned earlier, we have flexible ways that people can undertake the degree as well. So there's also a four semester long Masters of Project Management program. If you're an international candidate that are looking for a four semester long graduate program that would provide eligibility for a three year postgrad work permit, there is flexibility to take the program, the Masters of Project Management that way. For busy working professionals that are juggling a 40 hour a week professional career, who want to do the master's in project management, you too have the flexibility to undertake the degree that way as well. If you want to take the master's of project management, uh, really with part-time delivery, that 20 hours a week, um, as we described with the MBA and the master's of leadership program, the degree will take a little bit longer to complete, six semesters or two years, but it can be done and we can share with you details about what the program schedule looks like if you're interested. But here on the screen is really the most accelerated way to complete the Masters of Project Management program. It can be completed in as quick as three semesters or one year in length. So if you're interested in a one year graduate program focused on project management, what you could do is start with us uh, for the intensive on-campus five-day Langrad Leadership Campus uh, conference in May. And then from there, you would have four courses in your first semester, two of which are online, two of which are in person. So again, the online courses are seven weeks in length and you are dedicating about 10 hours a week to each uh, course each week. So a total of 20 hours for those online courses and the in-person courses as well. The commitment would lead to about 40 hours. So it would be like you are in a full-time delivery program. All you are doing is schoolwork as opposed to juggling full-time work at the same time. The second semester, it's the same delivery, two online courses followed by two in-person courses on campus. 
So again, the course weight, the number of total hours as a student you would commit is 40 hours a week, each week during the fall semester. And then in the final semester of the program, our project management students would be engaged in a capstone course. Again, full-time course hours of 40 hours a week, unless of course you're looking for a different uh, delivery of the program, like I mentioned earlier, if you're an international candidate or if you're a busy working professional that would like only about 20 hours a week of coursework. So there are many different ways that our students can engage with the Masters of Project Management program. We designed it that way so folks would have the greatest flexibility in how they earn the degree and uh, really develop the skills the competencies to be an exceptional project manager. Often what I get asked are questions relating to admissions requirements. And really, I think behind the questions about admissions requirements are really questions about if someone might meet the eligibility requirements or if someone might be considered for admission or even you know, I think folks are just looking for an opportunity to have it sort of demystified in terms of what the review and deliberation process looks like with our admissions committee. So this slide is intending to do all of that. So in those earlier emails that we described that you received with information about our programs and the application instructions, you'll find the admissions requirements for all of our respective programs. At the time that someone completes an application to the program. So remember the application process is a two-step application process. After you complete both steps of the application process, your applicant file moves forward for deliberation with our respective admissions committees. So what do I mean by that? It means that we accept applications on a rolling basis we do not wait until the application deadline to start looking at applications. There are people that have long since completed their application to start the program in 2024. They've completed their applications. They've heard back about the success of their application and they are holding an offer of admission already. So you don't have to wait until the application deadline is what I wanted to share. And again, at that time that you complete your application to the program, it moves forward for this sort of review stage with our admissions committees. And really what they're looking for is an application that shows strength in these three areas, prior academic experiences, prior academic aptitude, and relevant work experience. So what the admissions committee members are looking for they're wanting to see that someone has the kind of academic background that would ensure success in terms of a graduate program of study. So they want to look at someone's entire breadth and depth of academic experiences. They want to understand and have transcripts for all your prior academic experiences, your degrees, diplomas, evidence of your professional designations, certifications, and other courses. They want to look at all of this because there are many different ways that someone can move through and develop expertise in terms of prior academic experiences. So if you have gone to say a college and you have a diploma, they want to see details about that. They want to see evidence of any degrees, diplomas, and any of those professional designations and certifications. So please ensure that if you're thinking of applying, you include all of those details as part of your application. The other thing that they're really wanting to look at is to ensure that the individual they're considering for entry to the program has what it takes in terms of academic aptitude. And what they mean by that sort of at the undergraduate level, we get sort of conditioned to think of a course pass as a 50% grade. At graduate level study, a course pass is that much higher. To pass a course, you require a 65% to pass the graduate level course. And in fact, you need a 70% overall, a B minus, to actually cross the stage and earn the degree. 
So our admissions committee members don't want to set anyone up for failure, right? They really want to ensure that folks have the academic aptitude to be successful with graduate level study. So they're looking for the grades within the last two most recent years of academic study for each of your prior academic experiences. So if you did an undergraduate degree and a diploma, they'd want to look at the grades within the last two most recent years of study for your degree and the last two most recent years of study for the diploma program. They'd want to look at, again, the courses that you took, the grades earned. They want to understand all of those details when they make a del deliberation. The final area that they're looking for is this relevant work experience. So here we are talking about professional programs. They're designed for folks with professional work experience. We do not offer direct entry programs, uh, meaning someone doesn't have the academic and the professional experience required for our MBA or Master's of Leadership or a Master's of Project Management if they just graduated with an undergraduate degree. We require that relevant work experience along with the academic preparation when being considered for our respective programs. So what do the admissions committee members look for in terms of relevant work experience? They really want to look at not just where you worked and not just over what period of time. They're not zeroing in on the title. I mean, oftentimes we can have a job title that we were hired for that doesn't represent all that we brought to the table or all that we currently bring to the table in terms of our careers. So they really want to, to see a demonstration of the business managerial and leadership skills, abilities, and competencies that someone has developed or demonstrated across their respective roles. So again, these are the elements that they look for in terms of an application to the program. And I know all of you are sitting with the application instructions and frequently asked questions, PDF document. Um, please feel free to dive into that. There are lots of tips and tricks in terms of putting together a strong application that would show a well-demonstrated evidence of prior academic experiences, prior academic aptitude, and relevant work experience. For those that are looking to start in their graduate program in May of next year for the summer 2024 entry, these are the application deadlines. Again, it's a two-step application process. The drop-dead deadline, if you want to start next May in 2024, is November 3rd to complete the OAC application form. And for folks to be considered for that entry, you also need to have your application completed. All your documents submitted no later than November 17th. For those that are maybe looking at a little longer field in terms of their interest in starting their graduate program, folks can also apply currently for the summer 2025 entry. We only have a single intake each year for our respective program. So if you wanna start instead in May, 2025, you can do so. The deadline, the drop dead deadline to complete step one, that OAC application form is November 1st of 2024. And the final deadline to get all of your applications submitted and that application complete is November 15th, 2024. But again, we accept applications on a rolling basis. So you don't have to wait until November, 2024. If you're interested in starting in May, 2025, you can complete that application now. Once it's completed, it moves forward for deliberation. And then folks hear back about the status of their application and then you can plan your life accordingly. So really, as we get set to close this formal presentation, we are so proud of what we offer at Lang. We really are proud of our Masters of Leadership, our MBA and our Masters of Project Management programs, really offering students the opportunity to develop and hone their leadership skills, their business expertise, a global mindset. We are proud of the alumni uh, that have accomplished these credentials and are tremendous leaders in various industries, 
across Canada and the world in industries like healthcare, public and private sector, construction, banking, finance. We are delighted. This is an image from our last Lang Grad Conference. We're delighted to provide those professional development opportunities, opportunities to expand as a person, as well as a professional as you go through your degree program. So there's lots of opportunity for networking and connection and really um, to learn from others, global business leaders that speak at our conference and engage with our students. And here finally is uh, some sample courses from our respective programs. So again, there are 10 courses as part of our Masters of Leadership program, um, but there are courses such as developing your interpersonal influence and executive presence, politics of organizations, our MBA program, has an underpinning relating to sustainability. So not just will your MBA provide those sort of core business fundamentals you'll learn as part of any MBA program. There's also that sustainability piece in terms of ensuring the triple bottom line is met, that sort of financial acumen as well as social and environmental considerations are being made in terms of decision-making as a successful business leader and our Masters of Project Management. Again, so proud of that new program with specialized courses in the area of business consulting and project procurement and supply chain management, for example. We thank everyone for their time and joining us today. You can follow us on social media and you can also email our team via one of the program email accounts you see on the screen in front of you. Again, if anyone has any information or questions that they're seeking uh, answers to, then you're welcome to reach out to our team. We're more than happy to help.